Hello and welcome back, everybody, to the North American Starlighter's Upper Bracket. North American Playoffs is going to be Archon versus Complexity Game 3. I'm the Lyrical Dota, joined today by Llama Down Under, and we're hoping to see a deciding one this time. What are you expecting this time around, Llama? And we actually already do see the Alchemist Band on out. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, probably that Alch Band that happened in the immediate IO pickup from Complexity. So going back to basics now, he has a funny thing. They banned remaining. out... I feel like first game, right? They did a lot of good work with the IO, it gets banned out. Instead, Archon say we're not banning the IO and Complexity are perfectly happy to pick it up. I'm not actually sure about Whitebeard and Fluff and Stuff's IO. It's not something that's like coming to the forefront of my mind. So I feel like maybe that's not exactly there for them, but Monkeys Forever, it used to be Moo's famous slaughter, now it's Monkeys Forever's slaughter. Clearly doing good work, and I think they'll be happy with that plus maybe a strong mid laner, maybe just something like the Dazzle or Wyvern here to say, hey, you want IO? We'll make sure your life's really rough. It's interesting. You know, there are those other defensive supports that can end up going for. Tusk also in the pool. Five My personal pick remaining. that I think would have been good if Archon feel comfortable with it is a Wind Ranger, but instead they're going to opt to go for the block pick, picking on up that tiny. Uh, on the dire side, it's it's somewhat of an interesting dynamic because you usually want to end up being able to have stacks there, and normally your stack partner is going to end up being the IO, obviously not going to be able to happen this time around. So they are going to need to, well, I don't know. I, I'm curious, maybe you end up seeing something like an Ogre later on for Archon to get that Bloodlust damage up, but something to increase the attack speed of Tiny. I feel like I wasn't seconds, expecting the Tiny pick here. He's not unplayable um, especially if you have someone who's really good with the hero I think NIP and uh, Lemon Dogs would do this a few times where they have a tiny specialist on their teams and so they were very comfortable running the tiny without an IO for support but it is certainly rougher and he needs a quite quite a bit more items and without someone like the Alka, I mean, that's the OG strat, right? The Tiny just farms whatever on Earth he wants because he knows he's getting an Ag from Alk and it really reduces the burden. It's going to be interesting to see how Archon itemized this guy. Maybe a Beast Moss to pick up for them as well because it helps with attack speed, but not complexity, as you said. They could go for the Tusk. I always like him in the game. Or they can maybe try to get a Gyrocopter. I was going to say something to deal with the Time fact that they have a lot of Minus Alma, but all of those supports are very defensive. But instead, Gyro. Which, um, if Tiny gets up in your face, you don't exactly win as a gyro, so it's interesting. I think that this is somewhat necessary, though. Dire like, you, it's, a, it's a sort of hero that you can deal a lot of damage with early without having to right-click on down the Tiny. And obviously, he's not going to have points on up in the craggy exterior, but still late game as well. Rocket Barrage is always going to be relevant. It's going to do a good amount of Ten damage. Seconds. Also, the cooldown, very, very important. And it's not the most common Five relocate seconds, hero remaining. that you normally end up seeing, but gyro or IO with a gyrocopter, you get the bonus attack Reserve speed. Top. You're able to throw on out those flat cannons that much more quickly, and it kind of serves the same function that we saw in the last game with Shadow Fiend already being banned out, where you can slow siege on down the high ground with this gyrocopter. And also, if you need to be able to defend against an all-in push, a great hero for clearing out creep waves, depending upon which way they want to play this. Yeah. So, Wyvern is banned out a nice pickup from complexity because this way they don't have to worry about that obvious combo but dark cs still in the pool and complexity well i mean you might be thinking this is an off lane slaughter but i'll go and have a lot of flexibility here we've seen safe lane slaughters i don't think i've seen a mid slaughter before but you know you, you can always try new things um especially since it might be dual mids anyway although this io could be helping out dire it could be helping out some other hero yeah, it's very, very mobile at this point. Uh, I mean, occasionally you end up seeing also Slardars in a somewhat roaming role that end up picking up a... Uh, maybe you, you usually end up seeing that with something else like a Tusk that you can snowball in on top of somebody and then find a kill on that enemy mid laner. And we do have the, you know, Fluff and Stuff is a very, very proficient Tusk. It's, I think, the his highest win rate currently on this patch. I want to say something like 9 and 1, if I'm not mistaken, considering they did end up winning both of their games yesterday. And I think that they got the Tusk on him uh, one of those series. So he feels really comfortable on this hero. And with some shards coming out, he can definitely block on off whoever's in that mid lane and get them in a position where you can set up an avalanche toss combo. And if you end up also, like the other thing here to think about is this tiny throwing Slardar into the beginning of a fight and being that much more effective early without a blink dagger. 
Additionally, Tusk is really nice against the IO Tiny combo because you can do the Tusk Assassinate build, which is where you pick up the Shadow Blade on the Tusk, you kind of walk around to the back of the fight, making sure you bypass the sentries, and then you just kill the IO before he has time to think because you've got that nice little Warus Punch with the Shadow Blade and then Ice Shard and Snowball usually should be enough for him. He's very squishy early on. So that's one way to deal with an IO, buffing up everyone. They go for the AA ban on Complexity. Pretty good one, considering that if you get AA blasted in the face with the relocate being obvious, that can really suck. But now it's going to be Huskar ban out because Alcon's worried that's what the AA ban meant. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, again, a, a hero that can... Uh, it, you don't want to lose to a last pick Huskar. You don't want to lose to a second phase Huskar. And while you... I, the other thing is it's great against gyrocopter like gyrocopter does do a lot of magical damage and it can do really bring you down pretty low but there isn't that finish off and they would need to sort of itemize around Five other heroes and uh, prioritize farm elsewhere across the map to be able to make it happen bane gonna be picked up Complexity. maybe gonna give a little bit of help out and if we do end up seeing a dual mid potentially I mean, also just a really nice strong hero. Maybe you get relocated on, you sleep one, you fiend, or you nightmare one of the heroes, you fiends grip the other. Generally, nightmare the IO fiends grip the other, but whatever you're into. And then you've got a really strong team fight ahead of you, right? Because you've just disabled their carry. Someone comes in and helps you. It's nice. Additionally, if Complexity was thinking about picking up the Quop, one of the strong mid laners who's still in the pool, Bane is another nice way to be, as you said, one, harassing in mid, but two, good lockdown. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, time will tell. I think Bane is a great answer for Gyrocopter, a hero that tends to want to be able to pick on up a BKB. And if you're able to get one of those long durations Fiends Grip, you're going to be in a great spot. They don't have any disables as of yet, except for that Gyrocopter homing missile, which doesn't always end up getting leveled. And I think that now, the fact that they ended up taking it third, like they, it sort of puts another pressure on their draft, which can be addressed, and that's being able to disrupt the Bane. But it also means that they don't have... Like, it's, it's one more pressure that they're not going to be able to prioritize onto shutting down the Tiny to a large extent. So, I don't know. Um, they do end up taking the Dazzle, two very defensive supports. I'm curious what they're going into here, but it seems like they're going almost sort of the 4 Protect 1 strat. Yeah, and it gets a bit worrisome when you see a 4 Protect 1 strat around a Gyrocopter. If this were something like a Spectre... I think it would make a little bit more sense from the standpoint of Spectre, you know, she's one of the hottest carries in the game. Gyrocopter does have the problem that Flat Cannon is only six shots every 30 seconds. So if those six shots don't kill your opponents, you're in a bit of trouble. Of course, early game, all of your damage is magical, but that's this whole, as you said, four protect one strat kind of screams, we're gonna wait till this guy gets big. Now what they actually could be doing is Gyrocopter could be, there could be maybe two carries, or Gyrocopter is meant to be super aggressive using those relocates early with all of his magic damage to burst people down and maybe Dazzle's there to help out saying, you can go really crazy, you have a shallow grave. But yeah. I'm not sure, and I'd be, I'm really interested to see what else Complexity decide to pull out for this draft. I'm wondering if it's going to be maybe the Ember Spirit. Um, they could run Ember mid, considering that Tiny is kind of posturing to be in that mid role. Uh, obviously, it's not necessarily stuck in that role, but... Um, I think that you can get away with an Ember Spirit mid at this point, and then Complexity you may either have the Io or the Dazzle there to help him on out in that, that mid lane there. And uh, that would be a situation where it's sort of, you know, two protect two, and then one other guy's off doing his own thing. Uh, and I wouldn't mind that so much, because you do want to make sure that those two heroes get off to a good start. Yeah, so Earthshaker, always a nice pickup. And we already saw that Fluff and stuff. I mean, I don't want to... I really want to exaggerate. He not only were all on ahead, so he was having a great game, but additionally, he was finding great pickoffs. Really, there was that awesome bait at top lane involving the Luna, but he got like a 16 minute blink dagger on an Earthshaker. That's really fantastic. So, yeah. yeah they're in a good spot. I, I think the other thing here, you talk about early blink daggers, and uh, if he's able to sort of repeat that type of thing again, if they do end up running Ember Spirit now, you have the problem of being able to get picked off in lane with that instant initiation coming out from an Earthshaker, followed up by a Bane's Fiend Grip. So what I thought might have been the pick is looking like it might not be as great of an option. They end up going for the Clockwork, taking their off laner first, Dyer still leaving the mid laner alone at this point. And Archon are going to have a Bane or a ban now to get rid of whoever they want to. But it seems to me like it needs to be somebody who can really scale well into the late game. Yeah... I'm, I'm really, 
Okay, so in Complexity's lineup, I mean, you've got a Clockwork, you've got an Ayo, you've got a Gyro, you're going to relocate in, get kills, maybe have Clockwork hook in from Archon. They certainly have a Tiny who maybe mid, maybe safe lane. Maybe you just also pick a Lina or something as your mid to make sure it blows up the Gyro. Just another in-your-face hero. I'm just... I'm trying to think of a mid for Complexity, as you said, that it's going to go somewhere. It's going to do a lot, it feels like. Yeah. Well, they do end up banning out the Bristleback, not wanting to cause that little problem. Also, Broodmother not going to be making an appearance this time around. Uh, the couple of the cheesy heroes have been taken out of the pool, so that makes sense to me. Um, one last pick now with only 29 seconds left for Archon Dota to be able to take their choice. I feel like this one, it's going to really show where the Tiny's going to end up going, and they can go kind of any way that they want. They've got supports that are going to be able to keep you relatively safe in lane. Do you think that this is main. going to be the... Oh, they end up going for the Queen of Pain. Hmm. Yeah, she's made it through the draft really late. Normally a hero... Um, she was one of those heroes that I... She has a really high ban pick rate, close to 100%. So really surprising that she didn't get picked up earlier. And for Complexity, they... I mean, you can try for the Lena or something. Maybe also an untraditional mid. Chessy, how do you feel about another... Uh, Brewmaster. Um, I don't know if they have. Well, they have a lot of sustain. They could try and go for a lot of pressure very quickly. It. I just don't know if they're gonna have enough damage. That's the thing that I'm worried about is mid game and also late game. Like they can do a call down into rocket barrage and all that other fun stuff, but they really don't have any other damage right now. And only three seconds yeah. left. We'll see what they go for. Ooh. So that, that is bringing the damage and scaling potentially late game. Also a hero that can do really well mid, depending on what this matchup is going to be. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this. Now, this this can go one of two ways, right? This <laughs> this generally goes, the Legion Commander takes over the game. She somehow manages to get, like, five dual wins in the first ten minutes or something ridiculous. Or she has zero impact. I find it's really rare that we kind of see the Legion Commander who throws the mid line, and it's just because if she's getting those dual wins, she can snowball pretty easily. So this is something that I... All right, we're game three, all on the line. To me, it's it's like sort of pudge light in terms of a mid hero. You know, it's somebody that's like very much all or nothing in terms of if this is going to be great, as you alluded to there. And if you snowball, wonderful. If you don't, it's all going to be bad. I think that Io is a great complement to this because if Legion Commander is ever in a lane with anybody Five else, you're going to be able to relocate it on top of somebody and find yourself those dual lanes or even just you have the Io run with that Legion constantly in the mid lane. It's going to be a great situation. You can also take stacks Prepare somewhat eff effectively on the Legion just by maxing on out that Q. Um, but regardless, we're going to start this one off. J.O. is going to be playing on the Queen of Pain for Archon. Moo is going to be playing your Tiny. We do have Whitebeard on the Bane. Also, Fluff and stuff on the Earthshaker. And last but not least, Monkeys Forever, who's going to be playing that Slardar, all heading down towards the bot rune. Yeah. So now we've got Complexity. We've got Swindle Melons playing that offlane Clockwork. Legion Commander going to be played up by Limp, so kind of indicating that it's going to be a mid Legion Commander, which I enjoy seeing. We've got Gyrocopter on... Uh, oh, Chessie playing that Gyrocopter. Z Freak on Dazzle. And finally, Io being played by Hanskin. So, we okay, that is not a drawing. That's just... Don't go there. <laughs> Danger zone. Um, sometimes, folks... It, sometimes some of these players, like, if there's a pause, they draw all over the map. So I was just like, maybe it's actually instructions. But no, it is not. And... Looks like Complexity have a good idea that this may not be the place they want to go in the bottom lane, and this is actually fantastic for them. If this aggro try running, especially since they've already expended a lot of vision to make sure that their offlaner has a good time, I mean, if they can make this aggro try lane work up top, all of this is a waste. I like this, yeah. I, I think that uh, the the decision the by Complexity begins. to head on up there in the aggro try makes a lot of sense. Moo is going to be able to pick on up the bounty rune, nice. as is the Legion Commander. And I'm a little bit surprised to see both the Dazzle... Oh, yeah, Dazzle or Wisp are probably going to head on over into the mid lane, I would imagine. I mean, you can just constantly run the Gyrocopter there with them and get a whole heck of a lot of sustain, but I don't know if you necessarily have to, uh, but it could definitely mess with Sardar's Day a lot. Yeah, they, it's also something where it's really hard on a Slaughter, of course, this hero with the no mana cost sprint phase through things, you might try to go for body blocks or... Okay, they're pushing. They have level 1 flat cannon and they have uh, knocked out this creep wave and even heal bombed it. I 
I'm not sure what the play is here. I mean, is it like level one tower? Or oh, not level one tower, sorry. R like four minute tower? I I think so, yeah. That seems to be what they're going to do. They're going to pull this creep wave over as well, and they don't have the best push against this lineup. This is something um, probably should have seen earlier, but with this amount of sustain, if they're able to get off to a really early aggressive start and get the items up on Chessie in the very beginning. Oh, Monkey's Forever is actually going to be trapped on in here. The rest of the creep waves is going to tango on through. Nice little uh, recognition that you can pull the creeps into that side jungle. And at least for now, the pressure is still going to be applied, but I'm concerned for Archon's ability to deal with this. It's a little bit worrisome for the lineup. I mean, it's not all fantastic for complexity as well. Chessie's not gonna eat as long as they get the early tower, it should be okay. What are there? Three heroes doing in mid? There's gonna be a toss, there's gonna be a stun, and it looks like Limp, he's trying to heal himself up, but he cannot fight this even though he's got the tower's health. He's gonna be our first blood going down there to the auto attack from Flop and stuff, so that'll be that. Um I, I was saying up top, I feel like if not if Jesse misses some of these lost hits, maybe because they're pulling or because the creep wave's a little bit too pushed up because Monkey's Forever um, pulls the wave back, uh, maybe they'll be in a pickle, but he's not CSing super poorly. I think he's missed like two uh, that they had die to this camp. I, I, I just really like this play here. I, I think that with the amount of sustain that you've seen, it looks like the thing I was concerned about with this draft was that I didn't feel like Complexity had a clear identity for what they were trying to accomplish. And now they definitely do. They're going to be trying to take these towers as quickly as possible. Look at Monkey's fall with this, and you are going to be able to get out a lot of damage to the Poison Touch as well. That's going to be a fissure on top of Chessy. They don't have the sustain right now, but there's the Wisp coming in, and now they're going to be able to have it. Nightmare on top of Handskin a little bit longer. Finally, they end up taking out the Gyrocopter, and and now this is actually a bit of a problem. So the three-man rotation, definitely worth it, as we did end up seeing complexity overextend ever so slightly. It's not just a problem, I would argue. That's a complete disaster. The levels not being there for the tri lane. Suddenly you're up against a slaughter with level four, while the rest of you are level two. I mean, this slaughter is higher level than the mid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not what you want to have happen. Limp now is going to end up getting caught on out, and Fluff and Stuff is here to be able to lay on down the Enchant Totem. No overshot, or excuse me, aftershock to be able to get the stun out. I I still don't think that the counter push by Archon is going to be enough to keep them off of this tower, and it's still probably going to end up falling. I feel like he's gotten enough out of this lane that it's won, though. Yeah, it's... Looking pretty good. Oh, goodness. They have another Slither and Crush coming out, but Chessy doing a lot of good damage, and Monkey's Forever, he keeps trying to go up into that hidey hole, but that's not exactly a lot of options. He's buying time. Perhaps there's going to be some rotations more than just the Bane, but he's actually already eaten through all of the trees, and now here comes the Earthshaker. He doesn't manage to... Oh, he does manage to get one block off. Handskin is there, though, and Chessy keeping them away with both the Flight Cannon and the threats of Rocket Barrage, so they're going to be fine. But now we got a full try on try with a definite level advantage for the lineup of Archon. Yeah, let's take a look real quickly at the net worth and experience. I mean, you do have a very substantial lead, a thousand for both in terms of uh, Archon's lead in this game. And they do end up tossing out the Fissure as well, blocking off the ability to pull the Creep Wave if that's what they wanted to come and do here. And now, like <laughs> Kenny talked about it, level three on the Gyrocopter, level three on the Bane, they're in such a comfortable spot. Yeah. On the upside, while Limp is definitely behind in CS, most of that being due to his death, Getting up those points in the overwhelming odds makes it pretty easy and, never mind, I thought Top was doing some more business, but it's not. Uh, Limp should be able to see us just fine in mid, and especially if he gets a lucky rune, I'm not sure if DD will cut it, but if he gets an invis, you know, that can be some maybe easy dual winning or even a haste. Yeah. He's just going to run back in here, fighting off against the Tiny. In terms of last hits and eyes, uh, Tiny has gotten a little bit better at the Legion as they do end up getting initiation up top on a Monkey's Forever with the Nightmare. That's going to keep him alive a little bit longer. Crush turning it back around. Chessie getting brain sapped as well as right click down. But this is the thing. You look at the amount of sustain that this Io has by being able to overcharge as well as Tether. And Chessie always has mana. <laughs> you can always toss out those rocket barrages. Yeah, so... <laughs> I... I don't know, it's it's a really interesting lane. I do wonder how it's gonna work out. This tower is about half health. We've got, we're five minutes in. A 10 minute tower isn't bad either. And another Rocket Bro is coming out on Monkeys Forever. He'd get the stun though, and Chessy, if he also takes a Brain Sap, this could be a lot of damage. They've even decided to rotate up the cop who has just hit level six. She has a Sonic Wave, a big one coming out, and whoever she hits is gonna be taking it. Let's see if they can catch people, but everybody suddenly full. Handskin gonna be the target of her. Uh, damage and yeah, they do manage to TP out the IO, even though it forced a JO rotation, which does free up a bit more space for swindles. I think totally worth it. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, it was about as best you could hope with the Queen of Pain rotation. So you forced a lot of these rotations here. You haven't been able to take any objectives at Archon. And the big problem is that even though you did force the object or force the rotations, this hasn't translated into you being able to win the other lanes convincingly. Tiny is still winning the mid lane, 2,500 net worth on him versus Radiant the 2,200 on the Legion. And bot lane, Clockwork, well, he has been able to get levels and is currently level six, hasn't really been able to uh, out farm the enemy side. Oh, Handskin might be in a little bit of trouble now. They are gonna be able to get the Rocket Barrage. Tons of damage on top of Fluff and stuff as well as Whitebeard, and they are going to need to back out at least at this point in time. Sonic Wave still not committed. Handskin's in the area. They trade off the Nightmare, and three heroes hopefully going to be able to find some more kills here, but there are three heroes in the top lane as well for Fluff and stuff, who's actually really low. Yeah, Monkey's Forever also tries to go for a dive onto Swindle Melons and doesn't quite make it latch. The fact that they've had now J.O. up here for a while, and I feel like J.O. hasn't accomplished another kill, does have the Sonic Wave, but just not quite finding the angle, and Fluff and stuff very low and completely spotted out by complexity. I don't think the bulls will be able to reach him, so I are pulling them back. Um, also worth noting that the Queen of Pain ended up going for this 1-1-3 one, one, build. There's going to be the Sonic Wave as well as the Scream of Pain, and Io just goes down, walking a little bit too far forward. I really like this build here, Ajo, because what this means is now you've got the maximum amount of wave clear, which is what you need against the side of complexity. They are finally going to be able to take this tower, I think, with this next creep wave, possibly. Um, Zeefreak can keep healing it back up, and it's starting to do a good amount, but mid lane now, they're able to jump in on top. Oh, well, Swindles was thinking about going in there, but not able to make it happen as Legion does end up dying in the mid lane. Oh, and six start. Oh, God, complexity not where they need to be. I mean, both of these games, rough starts to see if anybody's going to be able to turn it around. This top tower also taking a lot of damage. Now Tiny is here, and the tower is in high range. If this is denied, this is devastating. The whole point of this lane is to get the early tower, get the gold. Zeefreak going to be slowed down, has a toss, slithering crush, and he is destroyed. So now, let's see if Handskin, I mean, he's only level three. We're eight minutes in. They're going to get the deny on the tower. Ugh. Dyer's top not under not sure best. what's the best plan, and yeah, and also we, as you can see, mass ping is coming out. Legion commander, being oh swindle melons in this case, being set up on because now no, no longer legion, of course. Here comes Whitebeard going in, gonna actually get off a nice set of cogs and fluff and stuff. Not gonna go for the kill because here comes monkeys forever to help them out. Slytherin crush gonna be hitting in swindle melons. He's got the battery assault, but it's not enough. The minus armor as well. He goes down. Uh, <laughs> um, well, first game a bit of a stomp, second game a bit of a stomp, third game looking to be potentially a bit of a stomp. Uh, I kind of feel like this one, you had all the answers for Archon in terms of what they had running. And um, I'm wondering if this last pick here of the Legion Commander was something that they were intending the whole time, or if it was in response to the good answers that uh, Archon had in their draft. It's tough to tell and without knowing what they were thinking. Um, it's pretty clear, though, that at this point, at least, Archon has all the answers. Yeah. So, Archon doing a really great job. The Chessie may also, as you said, there's a lot of damage coming out, and they have another Sonic Wave in, like, 15 seconds. So, Dio may just turn around and Sonic Wave Chessie. He's being healed up quite a bit, but another Scream plus a Sonic Wave. I don't think Archon has realized this tower is in deny range, or they're deciding to use it to bait out. It could have been that in the hectic team fight, it wasn't something they picked up on. Or well, they're really actually hoping that someone on complexity goes for it and they TP in and get a bunch of kills. Because that's worth it even if you lose the tower. But now we're going to have another toss in onto the Legion Commander. She's going to be fiends gripped up. It doesn't look like there's a nice easy way out for her. There's also a stun. It hits onto Jesse. He needs some help. And the Io, he tethers to a dying Legion Commander. So no such luck there. The Dazzle was the one they needed to TP in there. That was so sad. You just you want to be able to come on in there, help on out your carry, jump on in and save the day. And right as you jump on in as the IO to hold the hand of the Legion commander, it ends up dying away from that one. Very, very sad indeed. Chessy now getting hit from the toss also. This is Moo diving behind the tier two tower right now, almost at just about under the 10 minute mark. They are so completely far ahead in this game. And while you do have Swindles here with the hook shot already committed, he's not going to be able to really turn anything around yet. Yeah, something else to point out is you mentioned they're very far ahead. A lot of this also being the experience lead is really big. It means that your opponents have ults when you don't. It means that they have better levels in their spells, a lot of which in this case are huge damage help with things. I mean, it's not looking so easy. And we're 10 minutes in, no damage on Legion Commander. Hook shots not being terribly impactful. Uh, and now Swindle, he's going to go down. There's another toss, Slithering Crush. Two more auto attacks. No, I think Tiny Stun. Going to get the last hit there. 
<laughs> Who needs I, a blink dagger? I'm just going to have my yeah. buddy throw me on in every single time. And that's been the initiation the past several moments. And, you know, you think about the way that these heroes end up working. Fluff and stuff needs a blink dagger to really be effective. Oh, God, they're going to toss him in a second time. There's the connection. Limp ends up getting stunned on up. A second fissure is going to end up connecting there. They're not actually going back in again here. Moo opting to back out as the Io does end up being able to get the tether off and Fluff and stuff potentially in a little bit of trouble. They can turn back around on top of this if they want to. We also do have the Slarder in the area. There's Swindles tossing on out the hook shot. It's going to connect onto Fluff and stuff. And there's maybe the first dual victory of the day. Able to get the Slytherin Crush onto Swindles as they run away from him. But finally, a little bit of damage on that Legion Commander. Yeah, and it's not, you know, it's something. And it's definitely a good start. I, they're going to need a lot more of this. I know the plan, or I'm the plan for complexity was... Let's have Io relocate, get lots of damage on Limp. Unfortunately, that's not going to be coming to fruition for a while because, of course, Io is only still four and a half. But getting damage where they can, even if Swindle is expending the hook shot for it, really good. And we've got another big toss in the bottom lane. Jesse does drop the cooldown, though, and this may have been Monkeys Forever overextending. He's in sprint form, so taking extra damage. They just have to get the rocket barrage on him, and they do. That's going to be his death. And if this keeps happening, there's totally a possibility that Complexity maybe can make something more of this. But at the same time, Limp is taking a lot of damage. He manages to use that press the attack to walk it off. And uh, maybe going to need one on Chessie too, who is glowing. Yeah, that's... With that amp damage. Oh, goodness, Jesse's going to be going down. There's a fissure on one side. Now there's a tiny right there. No press the attack's going to help here. And Limp, actually, he needs to use it on himself. He still needs help. Where are the TP supports? They're just sacrificing Limp here. There's not even a dual damage thing that he could get going. He's going to fall. Looking really rough. Just as I was saying, maybe some throws coming from... Well, literal throws coming from Archon. No such luck. 1100 net worth lead or swing excuse me at the end of that one clockwork does have a hook shot it's gonna run on into whitebeard there's the feeds grip from the darkness doesn't have the ability to get on in there quite yet are they gonna be able to get in time nice nightmare keeping them alive a little bit longer transferring that over onto handskin now whitebeard is stuck on in there with them it looks like handskin's gonna end up falling they do finally get a kill there on top of the bane but gyrocopter gets the return kill onto the tiny so things are looking a little bit better at this point for complexity 4 to 14 though is a little bit hard to come back from monkey's forever after laying on the stun is going to need to back on out z freak with the uh weave down they're starting to lower down their amp armor a little bit more the turn around amp damage on the z freak uh, i think that they get this kill now oh my god just the tall and clean team play by archon they're all roaming in at the exact moments they need to yeah um potentially complexity here when they eventually get up relocate while archon will know that it's active it's something where maybe they'll think that they're big enough having uh they can you know players at this caliber they can feel this lead they know that they're 5,000 gold and 5,000 experience ahead and of course then there's the kill score which gives away some of your lead uh gives you the knowledge i think io maybe if they're lucky alcon might play a little cocky you get some relocates you get some more damage on the legion commander she doesn't have the best start but it's not like she isn't a hero who can try to catch up well, yes and uh, no. I mean, I think that you need to commit so much more for it to be able to find those. And I, I think that, like you said, you can catch up, but it's going to require really great teamwork and coordination and making sure that you're always at the right spot. Swindle's here doing a little bit of a pump fake on this hook shot, and Mu is just going to toss him up in the air. Afterwards, throwing on out that avalanche. Is going to miss the hook shot in the end? Unfortunately, was a little bit blind, and now he's cut off from the rest of his team. Gyrocopter, in the meantime, was able to pill it, pick on off Slardar Monkeys forever, but Queen of Pain taking his life in return. Um, that so... was actually really fantastic, that kill, because Monkeys Forever was being fought 2-1. Uh, not Monkeys Forever, the Gyrocopter. Uh, Chessie was being fought 2-1. And so getting anything there, always fantastic. The Purge immediately thrown out onto Handskin, hoping that he'll get away. But there's the Fiend's Grip coming out, and now they need some sort of help. I don't think they have it. Pop coming in as well. And Deo, wicked sick. 7-0. and zero. I mean, just look at some of these kill scores. So, like, you definitely... It's good to be able to find those return kills when it's these moments where you, as we do end up seeing actually, Mu toss the, uh, the creep on in to get the Queen of Pain out of the trees. It's good to be able to find those return kills when you end up getting caught out of position, but complexity have to be able to not get caught out of position because otherwise you're never going to be able to get the dual damage up on the Legion. It's 15 minutes and not only has it only been one dual one, I think it's actually been one dual committed total in the game. Um, so... Like, it's fine to be able to find those pickoffs and be able to outplay your opponents from time to time, uh, but it has to sort of come off the back of also a solid game plan, making sure, maybe settle down a little bit and find the, the real uh, 
I, I guess what your lineup is supposed to be doing, which is relocating on in with the gyrocopter, maybe being able to pick on up that key item on the Legion Commander, still, what is this, 1,100 gold away from picking up a Blink Dagger? It's looking really dire. I think that Complexity's been trying to do that. You can see, based on their positioning, they've been having folks farming up their jungle. A lot of people haven't actually been moving past this line, you know? But it does feel like Archon understand that that's how Complexity gets back in, and they're aggressively making sure that they can't just somewhat turtle on their side of the map and win. Yeah, take a so, look at the ward vision also. I mean, that's a really yeah. key component. They have wards all over Radiance jungle, and... Likewise, uh, Complexity doing everything they can to keep eyes on any type of rotations that come in. It's it's just such a hard position to be playing from. Let's take a look at some of the other items here. Clockwork currently has had to go for a Bracer and is going to be afterwards picking on up his Force Staff. For the Legion Commander, still sitting pretty on 1,100 gold, trying to build on into that Blink Dagger if at all possible. Gyrocopter, Drums, and no real other items as of yet on top of that Magic Wand. But he does deal a lot of damage at this point still with that Call Down as well as the Rocket Barrage maxed out. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that it's worth it at this point to just sort of try and... Uh, keep on farming and and stay away from fights as long as possible or is it a little bit better to try and uh actually relocate on top of people do you need to wait until that blink dagger comes up so in a game like this and in all games when you're using relocate you can't relocate without vision so looking at complexity's ward vision they're going to need to be able to see at least three heroes using these wards away from wherever they want to relocate right so if you're trying to relocate here you want to make sure you see three here and vice versa sort of thing so and of course, because the easiest place to relocate gank for them right now is going to be in this general vicinity, or maybe if they overextend on the lineup of Archon, because they want to make sure they relocate away from towers, because the worst thing you can do is, you know, you relocate near a tower, 40 DPs. I think it's really rough here, though, to try to go for those relocate ganks, um, as you mentioned. So I think sitting back, just trying to get a bit more farm up, you don't have an awful totaling lineup, um, and it's a bit early to talk about it, but your high ground defense isn't awful because you've got things like rocket flare to pull the creeps off of the tower you've got plenty of wave clear between the gyrocopter and the legion commander and then of course dazzle can heal bomb the waves and if you need to you've got cooldown so i think if you can drag this one out you've got a chance but right now looking very dominant for archon well and you say it's maybe a little bit early to talk about high ground defense but honestly given how this game has ended up going for them you, it is something you're going to need to at least be somewhat cognizant of and start thinking about because of how poorly it's gone that pretty soon here we're going to be in a situation where all of these blink daggers are starting to come up the tiny's just finished off his slardar finished off his we have the earth shaker only about what 700 gold away from picking it up and these are going to be very very easy kills to find once you have that extra mobility advantage yeah 100 percent. so archon they've got the blink up Oh, time. Okay, no. Fluff and stuff was just low jungling. He's also really close to his blank dagger. So, looking good. Now, let's talk Bane. You're ahead. Maybe you go greedy, go for a four stuff. Glimmer Cape, always a good item here, especially nice against someone like the Gyrocopter or the Clockwork. And I wouldn't be surprised. And Clockwork actually has his four stop up. I think Swindle doing a good job of recognizing that this isn't a blade mail game. You're a bit too far behind. You don't have the levels, which then leads into the health necessary that you're really bothering them with the blade mail. You know, we see here Complexity trying to bait out some type of rotation, but I think that Archon realize exactly what's happening right now, and as the smoke ends up breaking, they're smoking three heroes on in, looking to try and burst somebody down. If they're able to find Chessie and maybe toss him on back on top of the other heroes, this is looking like a little bit of a dangerous initiation. Fluff and stuff dropping really low. Echo Slam committed as well as the Enchantotum, but they're not able to do enough there. Whitebeard now is going to be able to get the Fiend Scrape on top of Swindles. Nobody has fallen really at this point for Complexity besides the Dazzle. Earthshaker also already dead, and Whitebeard is going to end up going down there to the IO last tick of damage. Swindles and, excuse me, Monkeys Forever, Sonic Wave, everything getting tossed out, and Mu trying to be able to find a pick off on Chessie, not going to be able to get it as oh, both goodness. of the defensive supports have gone down. IO coming back into the fray, can't find another fight if they want to. There's the jump forward, Thrush onto four, as well as an Avalanche onto four, as well as Screaming onto four, but they don't quite have the damage. Tossing the Gyrocopter, that's going to kill off the Clockwork, but you ended up losing the Queen of Pain for that engagement. That just became worth it, losing the Clockwork for the Queen of Pain. Limp could have even potentially gone for a duel there, very dangerous, but look at how they are all regen back up, and we'll see it in the fight recap. A huge win for Complexity despite the buybacks. That Queen of Pain had, I think she was past Wicked Sick. 
at this point. You know, she yeah. she was just kind of a murderer. That's the point where they're like, <laughs> Queen of Pain, please. Please stop killing people. But you can see these blink daggers being so valuable for the lineup of Archon. The only thing it feels like they're missing. Oh goodness, are they can't get the dual damage off into monkeys forever. The cooldown just in case. And that is going to be second dual win for Limp coming out. They should be able to get this tier one pretty easily. While Fluff and stuff doesn't have, you know, he's got Fissure, but he doesn't have an Echo. But they might just back out and play it safely on Complexity. They really want this. It opens up the map a lot. Yeah, and definitely. They, catapult, catapult, go, go, catapult. Yeah, good, good on catapult. Gyrocopter technically getting the last hit. He's the big... flying catapult. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So a big win for Complexity and this net worth graph being pulled closer and closer. And a huge kill. The fact that the Quop overextended there and they got that really nice for them. Unfortunately, Quop is still the Moto woman. Mo I, sorry, I call Phoenix Moto birds. I'm trying to make that work. Doesn't really. Quop is still really scary here. She has the Orchid up. If you catch out Gyrocopter, you Orchid him, he can do nothing except wander away sadly. Yeah, I think that probably now, if I'm uh, Complexity, that fight ended up going pretty well for you. And th the extended long team fights, they Dad haven't been able to at least, as of yet, focus down the gears that they needed. I think in that last fight, you take a look at the positioning of the Earthshaker, he kind of ended up getting a little bit caught out. There's the relocate in on top of the uh, Bane, and now... After not really getting any dual victories, the Blink Dagger is going to be enough to make Limp start to really snowball around this map. And a huge turnaround. This was, I mean, for an, there wasn't, it never went up to like a 10k net worth lead, but it was for about 10 minutes, roughly a 5,000 net worth lead. And really, really bringing it back. Complexity looking like they want to be able to win this game, and I think that they're going to be in a position to do it. Yeah, also, as you mentioned, they did a really good job of stemming the bleeding, and when we talked about it, they could see two heroes at the creep wave, because they were forming the radiant creeps up there, and then also another was passing by the ward, so they knew that this relocate was really safe, and now they know where the enemies are in their jungle, so really working out nicely for complexity, understanding that, hey, there's probably some folks trying to kill us all. Oh, Dale gets the courier, though. That was a big courier. Um, I didn't oh, the hook shot in, though. That's going to be able to catch onto him, and just going to be able to blink on out of there. Do they have any other possibility to find this not gonna look like it uh they do have a duel if they're able to catch but not quite in position as of yet jo's still running away oh that was a nice little snipe there what was on the courier i believe that that was the gyrocopter item let's take a look real quick net worth wise where we're sitting oh goodness items they're gone yeah. so um, either way we will investigate shortly folks um i is devastating, obviously, to lose that much net worth on your courier. I think that Complexity probably able to wait three minutes, especially if they can make another relocate play. But as we said, it's hard. Archon is going to say, hey, we don't want to be out of this yet. Maybe Roshan, maybe something else. They can do a really early Roshan, of course, with Slithering Crush. So with that recent update, oh, my, uh, my courier Fines. hotkeys ended yeah. up getting taken out there. So unfortunately, they are now gone forever. Sad day, but Roshan going to end up falling nonetheless. Fluff and stuff, they're actually going to back on out now and end up smoking to head on out of the Roche pit. I guess they're going to be looking for maybe... I'm not sure. I guess that they want to try and take another fight here, or they were worried about maybe some type of initiation on them in the Roche pit? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those fights Dyer's where I don't think... Is under attack. Uh, it's not awful for Archon. I mean, okay, if they take a full cooldown and then maybe a full uh, overwhelming odds, they might get pretty low, right? And then they're worried about being picked off by everyone else. Maybe Swindles hooks in, separates some folks with the cogs. It's not the easiest, and of course, you can check that frequently with Rocket, but we've got a Rocket flying over Whitebeard, Kappa Ross, and just going out to that top lane, constantly keeping it pressured. This actually is another play that I think they're doing by constantly pressuring up top and also having ward vision. You're splitting people up around oh, the map. Oh, cook here on the bottom room. Monkeys Forever is starting to drop a little bit low. They do have the possibility for a duel. Nice four staff there. Going to be able to find the duel victory as Limp wins another one. 52 duel damage. Really All starting to stack on up. Yeah, and that's exactly what they were doing, right? By continually pressuring the top lane with rockets, with whatever else they're doing, they're trying to split people up around the map because you don't want to just let the form go as Archon. But the moment they know that someone isn't quite surrounded, they're going to go get some dual damage on Limp, and this is working out really nicely for them. And now he's just going to farm up top casually, you know? J.O. probably not wanting to dive this one. And uh, should, with this next wave, be able to let the tower... Yeah, tower's in deny range now. Really nice win for the guys on Complexity. Yeah, definitely. And it just seems like at this point now, the vision has really been hampered a lot by uh, complexity, and Archon Radiance don't have the same advantage that they had in that regard, and playing to a large extent in the dark. 
I'm wondering if maybe at this point you need to try and find some type of smoke ink on through the enemy jungle, at least to just get down wards or find anything. But it looks like instead they're going to be going on in to try and take Roche, build on back that advantage that they did have before. The rocket flare going in, though, it makes it a little bit too scary for them, and they are going to end up backing out of there. Yeah, Slot is a hero who's not terribly naturally tanky despite being a strength hero. Additionally, because his build-up is generally blink dagger into four stop, he's not getting great stat items, and he doesn't even have on Monkeys Forever uh, treads, so he took, like, I want to say a fifth of his health was taken out by that Rocket Flare. He can't be in the Roshan like that, and Swindle, very diligent about checking it, although you always do against a Slaughter. So, nice play there, and now Complexity, they're... Oh my goodness, the net worth drop is back down to zero. Would you look at that? <laughs> Just like that, they're able to make it happen. It wasn't ever a super spectacular, crazy big advantage. I think the biggest thing that ended up coming out from all of this was being able to fight into the middle of a call down. And I think that, you know, you saw the Earthshaker get picked off in that mid engagement. That to me was the biggest play of this game was them being able to, you know, find that pick off there. He got off the Echo Slam, but I think it was only onto two heroes, mm -hmm. and I don't think it even dealt out the damage, it was, or dealt out the, the oh, stun. Speaking of pickoffs, Navarossi's going down. Goodbye, White Beat, another dual damage, but this is a dangerous place to be, but they've gotten the pick off, and everybody from Archon backing all the way up. I was actually a bit concerned there, because I feel like a four-man, because they didn't quite have five at the beginning of that smoke rotation into your enemy's jungle near their tier twos, they can collapse on you, but Archon not striking back in any way. Well, it's just the burst damage that comes out so quickly from Complexity. They shut on down that Bane, and that's a hero that you need to be able to control the Gyrocopter, to control the Legion Commander, and if you don't have him at the start of a fight, if he gets picked off, you can't go in there and try and fight against it. So just finding the right heroes to be able to get picked off, probably the Earthshaker and Bane, to me, maybe besides the Queen of Pain with the damage, are, are the most important heroes to find in those pickoff engagements. Yeah. So doing really well there. And um, if they keep this up, right, I mean, you've got J.O. trying to make space on that top lane, cutting the creeps, but they're getting a tower, and J.O. not quite able to siege this, is a Queen of Pain. So we'll be seeing Swindle Melons. He can't probably get an easy pick off here because they, they saw that rotation with this ward, but instead he does manage to get a hook shot off, pushes Tiny backwards. This is the play they need if they can get a cooldown onto him. And now there's the dual damage coming out. Nobody else has enough for the Slithering Crush. It's slowing these things down. Moo, they need more damage, and oh my goodness, Moo goes down, but let the Shallow Grave coming out just in time. J.O.'s Sonic Wave, it looked like it was going to do so much more, but instead, the line of complexity get away. Two kills in the bank for them, Radiant only losing a clockwork. Who cares about Swindle at this point? And Limp is already back up to full health. Of course, he had a regenerate as well, but even before that, with the engagement, the sustain coming out from these defensive supports, finally paying off. I, I think that that's really the most important thing in all of these fights is a shallow grave is game changing. Uh, one of the relocates defensively is game changing. We haven't had to see a ton of those in this game, um, but you think back to game one and the way that the IO was able to do that on several occasions, it doesn't seem like there's so many different ways, I feel like, for complexity to outplay Archon. It's not that they are always outplaying them, it's that they have the possibility to each and every engagement because you've got the, you know, the clutch grave at the last second, the clutch relocate. And for Queen of Pain, obviously you can land a good sonic wave, but it's just damage being dealt out. And they don't have as many possibilities to, uh, the, the heroes aren't really quite as diverse. I mean, Earthshaker gets a heck of a lot of stuns and he was able to hit a huge fissure as well as the Echo Slam. It's just not quite enough. Yeah, so looking grim and it's going to get worse and worse for the lineup of Archon as BKBs get picked up. Of course, Legion Commander going to be working on one and Gyrocopter has the Sanjin Yasha, has 3k gold in the bank. Probably a BKB up next, just so that Earthshaker can't do so much lockdown. Is this another smoke? It generally looks like a smoke. Swindle throws out the rocket, just double checking that Roshan isn't being done. It's a tad obvious that there's something going on here because creeps are hitting bottom tower, but if the tower pushes them out fast enough, oh, they're actually going for the Roshan themselves, and they have no idea on Archon. They probably, uh, yeah, I think that they think there's a smoke gank going on. Yeah, that's definitely what's going on here is that they, they, they want to be able to make sure they don't get caught out and so they're all grouping together and that's going to give them the option to come on in here and take on out Roshan and then potentially push the advantage even further. I mean, right now you're taking a look at this Legion Commander. 66 damage stolen isn't ridiculous, but it's enough at least now that with the BKB finished off, she can jump on top of that tiny immediately duel him, take him out of the fight, or any of these other supports here. Maybe even the Queen of Pain is probably the best option if they're able to get that. Even with the BKB committed, you're still going to tear through her. And I think that now Complexity have really sort of weathered the storm. And while we did see the early aggression not pay off a ton, I think they're in a great spot to take on down this tower and push for more. 
Also, BKB Legion Commander, I'm just saying, no more craggy exterior. That that's passive can win games and so it's always really funny um it works well here both against the gyro and the uh legion commander just because the aoe is about as large as gyro's attack range yeah definitely so the bkb is now finished off the sanjin yasha is there for the gyrocopter as well it's not necessarily like the biggest damage dealing items to sort of scale well into the late game. I still think it's pretty decent though. I mean, this is pretty much the constant build. It's not the Helm of the Dominator that you sometimes see where you go into stacking a lot more often, but they can be aggressive off the back of this and they don't necessarily have to have the crazy late game damage dealer because you have a hero that scales infinitely in the Legion Commander and the more levels you get, the more damage you get. Um, also now Clockwork with the Aghanim Scepter picked up. Yeah, I also think it's a great item. Obviously, Sanjin Yasha tanks you up a bit, gives you a bit of damage. Um, move speed, also very powerful. And here, I don't know if Chessy felt like he had the space to go for the Helm of the Dominator just because they were getting crushed so much earlier on. You know, making stacks may have just been something that would be fed away to Archon. So, a really nice job there. And now, Chessy doesn't need to worry about that because he's doing pretty dang well top of that net worth chart. Doing what he wants to do, Mr. Gyrocopter. They are going to be able to... Uh... Maybe at least think about jumping in here. Monkey's forever behind enemy lines and now realizing the precarious situation he's in. I wonder if they try and wrap around here. He's got a ton of mobility. Like, ah, no, they're going to probably end up just backing out. I, I think it's probably a little bit scary for him to stick around too much longer. Yep. And now we've got Swindle Melons finally joining the rest of his team. Of course, they have lost the Legion Commander. He's chillaxing in the bottom lane. Needs to be a little bit careful because he's near both Tiny and Quap. And I don't know if Legion... Okay, I don't think anyone's seen Limp. They're going to trade a Tier 2 for a Tier 1. Chessie is probably not going to push this fast enough. And we've got TP supports coming in down bottom. They completely know, in all goodness, Limp. You just want to not show yourself here. <laughs> Definitely. If he ends up getting caught out, it's going to be a problem. Oh, there's the jump forward. BKB onto Jo. He's going to end up falling. That's what I'm talking about. Relocate on him. No chance for a BKB. It goes through it anyways and not able to hit the hook shot, unfortunately. But that is going to be a nice pickoff for them. And the only downside? Around. Yeah, the only downside is both 10 second BKBs, I believe, burned there. And, they, you know, you could argue that was a deterrent. I don't think anybody would have gone easy tower mid. So I still think it's worth it from the standpoint of dual damage is very hard to put a, a timer on it and out of nowhere not a timer a worth on it out of nowhere swindles has an aghanim scepter that's what happened when your game is your team is in the hole and comes out of it yeah definitely it, that comeback mechanic still very evident worth knowing also handskin was just kind of running at the earth shaker for a couple of seconds they're not at all afraid of anything that's going on and now we're gonna see swindle continue to just pop all over the map here and hookshot his way to victory aghanim scepter also now finished on up on the tiny so Mu is going to start scaling a little bit better. It's a little bit behind where you would sometimes imagine it time-wise, but I still think that he's in a position to probably... I, like, we haven't talked a lot about who scales well into the late stages of this game. Legion Commander obviously scales infinitely, but it's also worth noting that Tiny is always going to be super, super relevant in terms of taking down these towers. And with a Moon Shard now, an item that can get picked up, I feel like you're always going to need to keep that in the back of your mind in, in terms of the late game, you know, taking towers and multiple buybacks. This game is also a little bit tougher for tinies than most. We already talked about how you usually have someone else to help back up a tiny. Beast Monster with that inner beast passive, of course, the IO of another popular choice. Quap might be able to be, sometimes also we see in games like this, the Quap actually gets the AC so that tiny can be freed up for other items, but I, I don't think we'll see that. This tiny will probably, as you said, Moonshard, maybe an AC. It might be a game to consume a Moonshard soon because the attack speed from the drums just isn't cutting it. What do you think about a, for the Queen of Pain at this point? Like, I'm wondering if they want to end up going for either one a, a Hex on her or possibly going for that Aghanim Scepter. Like, I feel like that item is always so great for being able to keep the pressure off of all of your lanes. Oh, wait, they're actually going to end up going for a five-man smoke now into the yeah, jungle. They, they have them. eyes on them with the ward, uh, but I don't know if they're going to be able to get there in time. Yeah, it looks like they're back and out for it, but of course they have a lot of heroes with blinks and so on, and they just need to guess right, and Ancient's always a good guess. Oh no, Z Freak going for this rune. Instead, they're gonna go on to Swindle Melons, and I don't know if that was the right choice. Jo does pop the old. Oh goodness, Hanskin has TP'd in, or relocated in with nobody else, is just gonna fall. I'm not quite sure if Hanskin was meaning to break someone, or maybe initiated the relocate, and then realized, oh, shoot. Uh, 
Z Freak, so not Z Freak, Sundowellens is already dead, but that is a nice gold swing in favor of Alcon. They're going to be very happy with that. At the same time, Bottom Tower now has creeps on it, and if they don't come back, Limp may just say, hey, I'll take me and my 200 damage and smack at that thing. Well, you talked about a little bit earlier, though, the fact that they have all these blink daggers on Archon. I feel like if Limp does go forward, TP's back and you be able to get the kill. Huge Echo Slam mid lane. Chessie is going to end up going down. And just like that, the TP's are canceled. You need to get the heck out of here right now because they are going to start pushing on down towards your tier threes. Archon have hit this huge timing now. They do end up getting the offensive weave. So their armor is going to start to fall. But again, Limp your tier three towers are going down. Limp doesn't have TP because he used his bots and cancelled there, 25 seconds. It looks like with Sundle Melons being up, they're going to back out, but as you said, now that Tiny has the Ags, and even before that, he's a hero that does a lot of damage, and he does a huge amount to buildings. You lose a team fight, you lose your buildings. It's why the Tiny is so famous for your 15,000 net worth behind, you still win the game. Right, definitely. Well, currently only 12, ca or excuse me, 1,200 net worth behind. The game hasn't eclipsed that 5,000 mark really significantly throughout the whole course of it, and relatively even. Experience a little bit more into the favor of Archon. Well, not anymore, but I, I just... I'm not exactly sure. It seems like neither team has really been able to effectively execute their strategy. For a couple of minutes there with the Legion Commander able to get several relocate blinks on in and uh, getting the dual damage picked up for her, that has kind of slowed down a little bit more. It seems like Archon has kind of weathered the storm of that really early aggression and have been able to um, sort of group together as five and make sure they don't get it end up getting picked off. I mean, both of these lineups had nice peaks. There was, of course, the early game where Archon just ended up taking it away, and now we can see that after Ilo, Io got a few relocate ganks, you don't fall for the same tricks anymore. So it is a bit rough. They're all going to rotate into Dio Jungle from the looks of things, or so maybe just group together, pick up a bounty rune. But they're losing that T1. They're losing it quickly. They could try to push her top, actually. If they can get some sort of return engagement, even damage on a tier 3, it's always nice. And Dazzle does have a gem up. So wondering how this will impact things. Oh, Archon actually ended up denying out that yeah. DD rune. Um, I kind of was hoping there for a second at least that Moo is going to come on in and try and take it, but not having complete and total vision on the rest of Complexity, you really don't want to be able to give that away to a Gyrocopter, or honestly even a Legion Commander. To me, Gyrocopter is a little bit more scary just because that AoE damage, but um, are going to be able to keep the Courier over here? Not exactly sure. I think that they just want to send on back the gem when they end up getting ready to go into fights so that that way they don't end up losing it. Roshan responded in another minute. Seems like at least for now we're not going to see any more engagements until that stage. Yeah, there should probably be a big contest around Roshan. Of course, it's an important objective for both teams. And uh, they've been spotted again, I want to say. I'm not super sure. They do know... A... I mean, they pinged right on top of the void? Complexity? Either way, they're checking They're checking ward vision. That's, that's what's going on with Dazzle, pinging all over the place. He's like, somebody give me vision. I need that courier. And they're just really trying to destroy what Archon's got going on, which is a great thing to do when you have an IO, of course. You want the superior map vision, as we talked about, to get in those sneaky ganks. Well, and they've been able to get it to a large extent. There still is a decent amount of vision at this point. Unfortunately, misses that hook shot from Swindle. Uh, it was but... ambitious, to say the least. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, they always had the option there as well to relocate on in after him, which is another component of this we haven't talked about a ton. The rocket flare is going to be able to be committed down Ooh. here. Did they... Did they... Oh, my goodness. It spawned as they're, like, walking out. These things That's, happen. <laughs> yeah, these things happen. Sorry, I was just like, how did they not... And then I had a look. But now Swindle Melons is going to poke his head in. He's going to be like, hey. And they need to destroy this ward. The courier may see it. The Dazzle is not on the right side of that. Either way, they, they know about this on Alcon. Again, these seem to be teams where if you're in the pit, you lose because, of course, you have an Earthshaker on one side and then a Gyro and Clockwork and so on on the other. But if Swindle can zone them here, they might not be able to get to the pit. It looks like they're grouping up for a smoke, and yes, they are. But was that Envision of the Void? It was. I don't think they were watching. Oh, goodness. Right. Oh, Swindle's Swindle. going to completely break it. Oh, Able he's catch probably... Him there. Yeah, he's gonna go down, but did he buy enough time? No, they stopped doing Roshan for this. They're trying to help him out. And now this team fight is gonna go horribly wrong for Complexity, losing people in the back line. Jesse is trying to do what damage he can in the BKB, but they've lost Dazzle, they've lost Io, and now Limp trying to desperately, well, limp away. But instead, it's gonna be a five-man team wipe, and Roshan falling into the hands of Archon. I feel like when you send a teammate to zone the opponents and he just dies like that, you finish the Roshan or you leave. It was so close. Like, I think that what he wanted to do there was able to lay on down the cogs and then afterwards just, you know, push them on back, 
secure the Roshan, but a huge team fight win, about 4,000 net worth lead, as well as 5,500 experience, and just so much more damage being dealt out by, by Archon. Huge, huge win for them, and now with the Aegis picked on up, it seems like they are at least in a position where they're sort of in control of this one, and they're going to be able to... I mean, look at the graphs right now. They're just dropping so quickly. 12k net worth lead currently for them, as well as a right in 7,500 experience or net worth. Um, I don't know. I think that this could end up being a, a set of barracks here if they're not careful. You don't want to end up committing a buyback to this. Gyrocopter and Legion do have it, but tier threes are going to fall, and it looks like they're also going to be taking this lane of Rax. Yeah, they're getting the racks. They're deciding it looks like a complex. Oh, okay, all getting a creep. That creep's gonna take some soul burn. Actually, none because he took no damage. Poor cool creep. Either way, the hookshot coming out onto Move at Swindle, realizing that's not where he wants to be at all. And I think it's the right choice there to not buy back. It's one lane of. Uh, it's one Rax down. Yeah, it's melee. It's going to be constant pressure, but it's the effect of being so far behind because you bought back, and when you had four seconds, you know, ten seconds on that buyback timer, it's really hard to bite that bullet and do it. I mean, the other thing here also that, like, all right, first of all, you end up losing this net worth lead that you were able to build. You also end up losing the Aegis, so now you can't be as aggressive. Finally, the gem ends up going down, and the one way that you tend to have to be able to get back into this game, which is by virtue of being able to take a map advantage uh, vision-wise and then get those relocate ganks in, you can't make that happen either because you don't have the ability to control the rest of the vision. Archon is just hanging out here in the bottom lane, hoping to see if somebody would come to farm this, but not going to be able to happen, and it looks like they're going to be comfortable at least pushing on down this tier 2 tower here, as we do end up seeing Complexity push on up towards the top tower. They're smoked up as well, and maybe we might end up seeing a bit of some trades here. Yeah, it's something where I think that Archon will more than likely TP back, but of course Tiny doesn't have one. Quap does. I don't know if our, our Complexity has spotted this out. Everybody except for the Tiny has one, so if they can go for this type of push, they're going to be very lucky, but no, they have no idea about the states because they were staying way far back. They're now going to go work on the tier 3, see what they can do. I think they have to get this. Tiny is going to... Uh, did somebody give him a TP? No, Tiny has to walk. Maybe they can take this team fight without a Tiny, but they've already taken a lot of damage, Pop and stuff. Swindle is trying to just get on out of there. BKB popped on Jo, and this may be just their sign to back on out. Wait until that's down. Now, Swindle Melons, he's a little bit far out, and Monkey's Forever thinking about going for a jump, but gonna be happy with the defense. They did lose the tier two, and they're gonna lose their ranged racks, although it's not the most important, so. Oh, they actually glyph for it. Oh, God. I, I think right there also, like, all right, so you lose your cliff now, and on top yeah. of that, you end up coming on back for it. I, I don't know. I think that Archon have kind of taken a, a, a pretty significant advantage at this point. Bane ends up picking up the Blink Dagger, 12k net worth. It, it just all comes down to that one team fight, and that's what we saw is that this game has been so close, and then one bad Roshan engagement. Archon are able to just blow this game wide open. Um, Invis Rune now up on Tiny. He's going to be looking to try and stock on out Z Freak, and it looks like Z Freak realizes that this is happening as well. The thing to keep in mind now, Archon is all spread out. They aren't quite as grouped up as they were before, so Relocate Ganks might be a little bit more effective if uh, Mu ends up showing down here in the bot lane. Yeah, I feel like this game went from very close to suddenly... Uh, you know, obviously Archon was favored, then Complexity had that good mid game. Now Archon is heavily favored again. We're about 14,000 net worth in the hole for Complexity. And we've mentioned the technical infinite scaling for Legion Commander has had 80 damage for the past 10 minutes, it feels like. I don't know if they have the team fight to stop this next push coming out of Archon. And they're going on in for it right now. You got AC up on the tiny. So much of effective HP. Currently seeing a 2,600 HP on top of that 26 armor. And then also, they're going to be able to be right here. But what are you going to do against this? You've got counter initiation for days out of Archon. There's the hook shot on in. Four staff to the other side. Really good plays there. Able to connect, but he's still going to keep on hitting away at this tower. Jesse is trying to do everything he can, but that's just going to be the Aegis committed. And perfectly happy to let that one fall. Now they're going to be able to jump forward again in a second with Jo if they want to. Hookshot in again, gonna be able to connect with the four staff keeping alive. Sonic Wave onto two. This Legion Commander is actually gonna be able to catch on out onto Jo, not being able to burst through him yet in the whole course of this. And now he backs on out. Huge echo slam there. There it is. Moo ends up jumping in again. Swindles is able to take on out the Queen of Pain, but he pays for it with his life. Triple buyback. And now that looks like Archon need to disengage from this one. 
Yeah, if they can get any sort of return kill, all the relocate coming out, Fluff and Stuff taking a lot of damage. Monkeys Forever, though, does manage to stun up Tessie with that Slytherin Crush, and Io, he's going in ham, but he is a little, little ball of light, and it doesn't look like they'll be able to catch anyone. I have to say, Archon, they played that perfectly. I was really worried because they spent quite a bit of time, uh, I mean, they tried to isolate off the Queen of Pain, and they did actually get Tiny to respawn in a really bad location, and they stopped the initial blink in by the Earthshaker, but he just backed out of the cooldown, waited on the, uh, uh, the sidelines until BKBs were down, and then came in with the Echo Slam after the fact, destroying that team fight. And Alcon, again, huge winners on that. Big uh, deficit now as well for complexity on item progressions due to buybacks on yeah, three of their cores. I, I think you, I mean, my at least expression that I end up sort of encapsulating that engagement is cool as a cucumber for Archon. They did everything that possibly they needed to do in that engagement. They burned through the Aegis without being able to lose the Tiny in the end. The rest of those supports, while they're not as defensive as you see on the side of complexity, you don't have the Shallow Grave, you don't have the Io being able to defensively relocate you out of there. You still do have, obviously, the Glimmer Cape on the Bane for the uh, Earthshaker being able to force staff you away. All of these little items here, itemization for being able to be defensive. And now you're taking a look at a Slardar who does have the Lincoln Sphere on up and the extra ultra mobility. And maybe here Complexity is going to be able to find something. But honestly, oh, this actually could be terrible for Moo. Uh, looks like uh, they're not exactly going to be able to engage on anything. There's going to be a hookshot coming out from Pop and stuff. That was a really weird engagement. And now Swindle Melon T is trying to just TP out in Glimmer Cape. They won't be able to know one more auto-attack will do it on Pop and stuff. Unfortunately, in the back lines, they've lost the Dazzle. They've lost the Io. And Chessie, he is isolated without some help. Oh, gosh. Is Lim going to go for a duel here? This is a very ambitious duel. Tossed up. It's going to take a lot of damage. And the winner. Oh, goodness. It comes out onto the slaughter monkeys forever getting plus 18 damage and that was maybe not the engagement they wanted to take and tiny may just barrel down the mid lane knowing that there are no buybacks her shaker even bought back into that game to try and get in here they they're smelling blood they realize that this is their moment to go there's no buybacks at all as you mentioned on complexity and i think that this is just going to be straight for tier fours probably yeah. oh stopping for a moon wall first you got to show them who's boss they're actually doing the quote safe play but i think you know that there aren't buybacks what is swindle melon's going to do to disrupt that and they're even back in a little bit tiny oh he's making sure that there are still creeps inside the base so that they don't have to deal with backdoor detention and now they're pinging it out they're realizing they should have gone for t4s because Radiance there are no buybacks and this is probably just gg they might have dazzle and uh the swindle try to do one of those lost stands but i don't know if it's going to be enough and they call the gg gg well played ends up getting called good luck further i mean they're still in this tournament they're not out of yeah. it at this point so um, I, I think also there as well, the only reason that they ended up going over to the side there was uh, just because there was backdoor protection and all the other stuff anyways. Yeah. But regardless, we do end up seeing Archon move on forward to the next stage. They are going to have a spot in the grand finals up against the lose, or the winner rather of Complexity versus DC, which should be taking place, I believe, on Friday. So uh, Complexity and DC, depending upon who ends up winning that one, is going to have to play two series in a row. And Friday is when that's going to end up happening again. 2 p.m. Pacific time is when the first series, and then 5 p.m. Pacific time is when the final series is going to be. Thank you again for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure casting for you guys at Lyrical Dota and at Labadon Under. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we might end up being able to have an interview in just a couple of minutes here with uh, someone from Archon. Can you tell us about that? Oh, just, yeah, uh, both captains of both of these teams agreed to send someone our way. I'm going to have to make sure we figure out a way to get them on the line because some people prefer Skype, some Discord, etc. So we'll try to set that up. We'll probably just do a quick stall out of, you know, word from the sponsors and try to make sure we get someone in here and hope they don't run off and eat or celebrate or something. Yeah, no celebration, no <laughs> happiness, no nothing for you guys, Mr. Archons. You have to come and talk to us. Um, so we'll see you guys in just a second. Stick around. Thank you guys again for watching the Star Ladder North American Playoffs.